And we're live here on Pints with Aquinas. G'day, everybody. Today, I would like to review Michael Knowles' new cigar, which he very, very kindly sent me, the Mayflower. I got a text the other day from Michael saying, can I send you some of my new cigars? And I said, yes, most certainly. And then I heard the next day that they sold four months of inventory in one day. And I thought, that's it. I'm never going to get any of these cigars. But they arrived today, and there are two he has. He has a one called Dawn and one called Dusk. We'll put the, uh, put the logo up on the screen there. This is a very, very beautiful logo. I really think, you know, symmetry and simple is best when it comes to cigar bands. I think that's true in, in, in most things. I remember as a kid, my dad sitting me down and showing me the Canadian flag and saying, you see this? This is the most beautiful flag in the world. Now, I don't know if I agree with that, but that's what he said. And he said, you know why? I said, I don't know why. He said, it's because it's simple. So there's that. Honestly, my I know that it has a lot of negative connotations these days, but my favorite flag in the whole world is the um, Confederate flag. I think that is absolutely beautiful, uh, just as far as aesthetics. This is very beautiful. It has the Mayflower on it. It has... I noticed this just after I got it, it has waves around it. Um, anyway, so we're going to give this a shot. I'll let you know my take. Now, I'm not a cigar aficionado. I do love a good cigar, but typically I know what I like and I know what I don't like, but I'm not good at saying what something tastes like or doesn't taste like. Now, our fella and uh, friend, Matt McCloskey, who's the general manager of our cigar lounge here in Steubenville, Chesterton's, that boy knows his cigars. We'll be sitting down. He'll have a puff and he'll say <laughs> something like, it tastes like a, 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 a uh, the leaf of a rose had been doused in honey and wrapped in an iceberg lettuce and stomped on by a, by a let's see, a sneaker from a man who just ate wasabi. Was it was? Yes, was, it's really quite ridiculous. I, on the other hand, tend to go, oh, it's good. Uh, I like that. So... I'm going to cut this. See, right now I don't know what to tell you. Okay, before I light up, I can at least tell you that the construction is magnificent. Um, by that, I mean it's firm the whole way over. There's no kind of pockets throughout it. Let's see. Let's try that again. Only in Steubenville could you find a studio where they're like, yeah, you can smoke inside. That's completely fine. Why would you even ask, sir? It's beautiful. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb and say I get, you know those lemon slices covered in like uh, sugar? You know the ones that I mean? That's what it tastes like. It, I mean, there's hints of it. Yeah, cream, citrus. Mmm, it's really good. So thank you, Michael. We have a link to Michael's cigars below. As I say, I don't know when they're going to have more in stock. We wanted to get some for the shop, but they were sold out. That's really good. That's about as much as I can say right now. As I said, not an aficionado. So I wanted to take some questions from our local supporters today, but before I do that, I want to let you know that we are going to be doing an Amazon watch party tonight as a locals community. So if you are a local supporter at 7.30 tonight, we are going to be watching together A Man for All Seasons. The way a watch party works is we get to watch it at the same time and chat throughout it if we want. So click the link in the description below if you are a local supporter or if you want to be a local supporter. 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, we will be watching together as a community, a man for all seasons. <coughs> mm. All right, let's take some questions. These come from our local supporters and we'll... See how we see how we go. Joe King, 5724, says, I have a friend whose greatest stumbling block for joining the Catholic faith is the papacy. He claims that the verses about Jesus handing the keys to Peter aren't enough and that there's no evidence for apostolic succession. He said if apostolic succession were so important, we would have documents from 
we would have documents about Peter handing down the keys to his successor. First of all, I don't think that's true. I mean, to say something can't be of vital importance unless it's explicitly laid out within Scripture, I don't think works. Uh, the, the method of baptizing, I mean, baptism is a very important thing in the Christian life. Protestants and Catholics would agree on that, though we have different understandings of what baptism is. But there's no explicit uh, instructions on how to baptize. So you might say, well, if it was important, why aren't there instructions on exactly how to do that? You could also think of the 27 books of the New Testament, which weren't really kind of put together and recognized until well after uh, the apostles died. So I don't think that should be a stumbling block. Now, as far as apostolic succession, uh, fair, I, I don't know, I'd have, to, I'd have to look into it. But as far as the, the early church on the papacy, I think we've got Good evidence that suggests that the early church fathers recognized the Church of Rome to be primary. Thinking of Eusebius of Caesarea, uh, uh, Pope Clement I. Now you might say, well, he was a pope. <laughs> well, yeah, but he also he's the fourth pope, and he lived before the year AD uh, 100, and he is meddling in the affairs of the church at Corinth, basically saying. It's dangerous for you not to listen to us, the royal us. Um, so I think there's there's good evidence from the church fathers that you might point him to. Uh, Ignatius of Antioch is another one who references the supremacy of Rome. But here's a book that I'd recommend you getting. Um, the Early Papacy to the Synod of Chalcedon in 451. So if you want to see what the earliest fathers had to say, uh, it's a quite a small book put out by Ignatius Press. And I would really recommend getting that. And as I say, the only fathers it draws from are those up to the year AD 451. So I hope that's a help as I take another smoke of Michael's cigar. I'm going to tell a very embarrassing story, though, before I get to the next question. Thursday, feel free to laugh out loud if you find this funny. So it's a very awkward experience for me getting into an elevator with another person. Especially in this building, because there are very few occupied rooms and so it's unusual to get into an elevator with someone else. Like, I'm okay if you get into an elevator and there's like five people. But to get into an elevator with one person, it's just, it's very awkward for me. I don't know if I'm supposed to speak to them, if that will make them feel uncomfortable. I, 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 all of a sudden, I forget how to stand properly, okay? Well, anyway, I just got into the elevator with this Sheila. I don't know who she was. Lovely girl. And if she's watching, hi. And I apologize for what happened that I didn't realize until you got out of the elevator. All right, so I'm there, oh, hi, how are you? You know, I don't know what to say. And then she leaves. The, the doors close and I turn around, look in the mirror. I have a green boogie uh, just on the, on the lip of my nostril. And that was very embarrassing. You're welcome. All right, next question. Uh, let's see. This person asks, how do you come up with the names for your lo-fi songs? I'm going to tell you that, but before I tell you that, I need to say that we, we didn't copy Michael Knowles in this. We're actually coming up with a cigar band and a cigar uh, for Pints with Aquinas. And uh, we'll throw the image up on the screen here. You can have a look at it. I think it's really beautiful. We're working with a cigar manufacturer in Nicaragua. We've tested multiple cigars and have settled on the one that we think is absolutely sensational. And so our own cigar will be coming out shortly. Uh, well, when I say shortly, I guess I would say by the by the end of February. Um, in the spirit of localism, we'll, we will only be selling it at the Cigar Lounge. And by the spirit of localism, I mean it's illegal to send cigars out of Ohio. So in February or March, give the shop a call if you're in the area and come have a pint with Aquinas Cigar. All right. How do you come up with the names for your lo-fi songs? So for those who aren't aware, I have a channel called Catholic Lo-Fi, and we are almost about to release a 24-7 stream of amazing Catholic lo-fi music. But it's a fair question because, I mean, just look at this. I'm just pulling up this one particular album I have. Here are some of the names. 331272, Airedale, Batty Street, Bosco, Bowman Park, Bubblers, Casual Clothes Day, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I name songs? So what I do with my Catholic lo-fi songs is I take memories from my childhood and I name them that. So 331272 uh, was the number of a friend 
where I grew up. It's not the entire number, so you wouldn't be able to call it, and he doesn't live there anyway. Airedale was a school up the road. Baddy Street was the street my best friend lived on. Bosco was the name of my high school, St. Bosco. It's John Bosco. Bowman Park was this park in a beautiful little town called Crystal Brook. Let me know if you've been there, where we would uh, go and have barbecues. Now, bubblers, I think you call them water fountains here. We call them bubblers in South Australia, at least, and so on and so on and so forth. So that's, that's how I name my... <laughs> That's how I name my songs. Here's another one. Rage starts at midnight. Now, that wouldn't make any sense to you unless you grew up in Australia in the 90s. I'm not sure if Rage is still happening. Rage is basically a music video show that would play Friday night, started at midnight, and would go all the way through to like 10 in the morning. So there you go. Okay, let's see. Yep, still getting the citrus, still getting the cream. That's all I got. But it's absolutely great. Thank you again, Michael. All right. Paddy says, regarding your teaching opportunity in Austria, will you be focusing on... And I'll explain what's going on if you're unsure what that means. Are you focusing on a particular work of Aquinas's or will it be more of a survey? If it's a survey, what text are you most excited to teach on? So I, am, I have been asked to co-teach a philosophy class in Garming, Austria in the spring. And so my family will be heading there. Please God, we're waiting on a few visa things to get sorted, but we'll be heading there the first, probably the second week of January for five months. And so currently we're banking episodes like crazy so that we'll still have weekly episodes of myself and a guest coming out. But then I'm also going to be hiring a good friend of mine, uh, Australian comedian James Donald Forbes McCann. You may have seen him on our channel do those funny phone calls like where he called Joel Austin to see if he would come on the show. He's a wonderful fella, solid Catholic. Um, some of his comedy is a little, uh, a little blue, shall we say, but he's he's just hilarious, and I, I love the fella. And he's going to be also uh, hosting interviews while I'm away. So you're going to get me and him. And then I'm also thinking that while I'm in Austria, I would like to kind of make my way down to Rome. It's a short car ride, and maybe interview different people who are living in Rome uh, at the EWTN studios. So. So I certainly will not be dropping off the channel, but we'll be living in Austria for, for five months. And I'll be teaching with Dr. Robert McNamara, who is a phenomenologist here at the university, um, philosophy of the human person. So we're going to be uh, inquiring into the nature and structure of the human person. And it's, we're going to be looking at how our understanding in the West evolved concerning the human person. So certainly some of the classes I'll be teaching will have to do with Augustine and Aquinas' commentary on the Sermon of the Mount. Aquinas' commentary on the Sermon of the Mount is absolutely amazing and a real insight into what the human person is and is for and how they can be happy. It's just terrific. So that is what I will be teaching in Austria. Uh, let's see. Michael H36 says this. Thoughts on the growing number of people who are becoming more and more friendly with Sedevacantism after recent events. What would be your way to encourage or ensure people that they shouldn't leave the faith? <laughs> yeah, I've heard some very worrying statements, actions from people I thought were pretty orthodox. And now they are saying Rome can defect from the faith. Yeah, it's become really crazy. I completely agree with that. It's um, I think we should say what Sedevacantism is is what it isn't we should say what schism is and what schism isn't um f well so set of accountism is the idea that the the chair of peter is vacant and that there is no valid pope and i would say that's a grave sin to to hold that view and certainly to perpetuate that view even if you were to say something like all right but the pope we currently have is an anti-pope i think that is um not a wise move, to say the least. And I think we could use a sort of Pascalian wager to show why that's the case. Pascal's wager was an argument for why belief in God is reasonable if the evidence for Christianity and atheism seem equal, right? Why? Because if I believe in Christianity and it's true, look what I get. If I believe in atheism and it's true, well, I don't really get much, maybe a little bit, but no way near what I would get if God exists and I believe in him. And I think you could do something similar. Uh, I haven't thought this through entirely, so I'm sure there are holes in this. But you know, look, it's really not your job. Oh, I just got a text from Michael Knowles. We should probably read that. 
Uh, it's really not your job to. Okay, he emphasized an image. There you go. That's what that's what he said. He emphasized the image of our pints with Aquinas cigar. It's not your job to adjudicate on such matters. You are not in a position to make those judgments. If you're right, which you're not, but if you're right that Pope Francis is an anti-pope, it, it, it's okay. You don't have the authority to make that declaration. If you're wrong and you accept uh, what all of the, you know, the church has accepted, generally speaking, that Pope Francis is the authentic pope and you're saying he's not, you're leading souls outside of the church, which is a grave sin. Uh, so that's what I'd say about that. Now, what is a schismatic? So let's 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 say what a, what is not a schismatic. Just if, if somebody criticizes the pope, they're not a schismatic. If somebody thinks that we have a bad pope, they're not a schismatic. So I suppose you can have people erring on one side of the spectrum where they make it appear that if you criticize Pope Francis or think he's a terrible pope, you're therefore a schismatic. I don't think that's true at all. I think you can do both of those things in charity and, of course, not be a schismatic. What is a schismatic? Here's what Thomas Aquinas has to say. He says schismatics are, or schismatic, schismatics, you define, you say however you want. Schismatics are those who refuse to submit to the sovereign pontiff and to hold communion with those members of the church who acknowledge his supremacy. So I suppose we can either divide that up. Let's divide that up. If you refuse to submit to Pope Francis to recognize him as the true successor of Peter, then I don't know how you get around that. You're a schismatic. Okay. Now, if you refuse communion with those members of the church who acknowledge his supremacy, you're also a schismatic. I'm thinking of a brother Peter Diamond, quote unquote, brother Peter Diamond. But I can also see some lesser forms of, of being a schismatic here. <clears throat> like, for example, if you were to say something like, I would rather die uh, than attend the Novus Ordo. I, I don't know. That seems like it falls into that second category of refusing to hold communion with those members of the church who acknowledge his supremacy. I'm not as certain about that one. But certainly, if you're refusing submission to Pope Francis, you're a schismatic. So, yeah, we should we should warn against this. Um, we should pray for those who fail in this way. I mean, certainly I think like in times like this, when there's a great deal of error uh, concerning what the human person is and human sexuality and things like that, we can see the abuses on the left, if you want to use political terms, on the left side of the church and be so outraged by that that we run as far to the right as possible, not realizing that there can also be errors on the extreme right. And so I think what we want to do is be in humble submission to Pope Francis. And again, humble submission does not mean not criticizing, not making your views known, uh, not having having an opinion about him. Uh, since, you know, canon law says that we can, uh, uh, Thomas Aquinas says that we can, um, and even Pope Francis has invited all to make their voices heard. And so, um, I guess a final word I would say that I think is, is in as much as we can, and this is a difficult thing to say, but I think in as much as we can, we really have to show each other charity because I don't know anybody who's saying this isn't a great time of confusion right now. And I, I honestly, personally, now maybe they wouldn't want to sit down with me, but I would gladly sit down with someone like Taylor Marshall or what's that other fella's name, Kennedy something. I, I would hold Kennedy Hall. I would gladly sit down, have a cigar with these fellas. I think I'd really like them. I, I think we'd have a good conversation. Or I know uh, Michael Lofton, he's a friend of mine. Um, you know, we might have some disagreements as well, but really like him. He's a good friend of mine. Patrick Coffin, you know, I think is, seems to be uh, a set of a contest. Um, he would, he seems to want to differentiate himself from other set of a contest because he accepts the, legitimate papacies of uh, John Paul II and Pope Benedict XVI. But again, look at the term, set of a countess. What does that mean? If you say that there is no valid pope right now, when the whole church has essentially said, yes, there is, I don't know how you get around that. But again, he's he's someone I like. I think he's very funny. He's very insightful, witty. I like him. So it's a difficult time in the church, and I think we have to extend each other charity. You know, like if we were sitting over a beer with each other, we probably might disagree with each other, right? And go, ah, no, 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 I disagree. I think what makes it difficult, though, is when people have megaphones that YouTube enables, you know, that allows, then uh, when you put something out public and somebody thinks you're leading people astray, 
I understand the desire to respond to those people in particular, but I personally, I know I'm sure I've failed at this, but generally speaking, I don't like to personally call out individuals uh, and do, now maybe Thursday can remind me, maybe I'm just a hypocrite here, but I don't think I've done videos where I've specifically called, that's not true. I have done it to Father James Martin. <clears throat> so, but I don't know. That's, that's my thoughts. I don't know. You can tell me what your thoughts are below, but those would be a few off-the-cuff thoughts. Ryan Sawyer says, what pulled you to Catholicism over Christianity? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't put it. Okay. At, hang on. He says, at the end of the day, we worship the same God. This isn't supposed to sound rude, just generally curious. Okay, fair question. So asking why I'm Catholic instead of Christian is like saying to somebody who lives in Florida, why are you a Floridian and not an American, right? To be a Floridian is to be an American, but to be an American isn't necessarily to be a Floridian. If I'm a Catholic, I am a Christian. And it's my opinion that Catholicism is the fullness of what God wants for Christians. And so I would refer to it instead as Catholics and Protestants. I acknowledge that my Protestant brothers and sisters are Christians, just like I acknowledge my set of accountist brothers and sisters are, are Christians. Uh, but I would rather make the dichotomy between Catholicism and Protestantism. Why am I Catholic? Because I think Catholicism is true. You know, I think Jesus Christ is the second person of the Blessed Trinity. I think he established a church specifically on Peter and the rest of the apostles, but that Peter has primacy and that um, and that there's a real uh, kind of hierarchy there that we have to submit ourselves to. And so that's why I submit to the teachings of the Catholic Church. That's why I'm a Catholic. All right. Anonymous. I got to light this cigar again. I'm sorry. This is a really good cigar. I know I don't I know people have very strong opinions about cigars. I remember Jennifer Fourweiler taking a shot at well me I think and other Catholic YouTube men and saying oh they always smoke cigars like they're making up for something. I'm like what do you want me to do knit? I like cigars. That's why I smoke them. It's not about trying to be masculine. It's about enjoying something. And I just love sitting down in the morning or in the afternoon. You know, cigars aren't like cigarettes. I'm not saying they're healthy for you, but it is merely tobacco leaf, right? That's it. You have a wrapper, a binder, and a filler, but all of it is just leaf. That's what it is. And it takes about an hour or an hour and a half to smoke. There's something nice about sitting into a chair and dedicating an hour of an hour and a half to sitting and reflecting and thinking, reading a good book. And so I very much enjoy it. I find it very relaxing. Kind of reminds me of what Ron Swanson said about fishing. He said it's like yoga, but you get to kill something. Well, you don't get to kill something, but it kind of is like yoga, except not demonic. Oh, no, I didn't say that. Uh, so I'm a fan. I really like cigars. You don't have to like them, but I tell you what, if you were going to get into them, I'd definitely go for the Mayflower. This is really good. And he's not paying me to say that. <coughs> I just inhaled and I'm kind of glad that I did. That was fantastic. All right. Anonymous says, in regards to purity in the sacrament of matrimony, have you found that it's easier to resist temptations towards impure behaviors, thoughts, desires after being married? No, is my first answer. Or do those temptations still arise just as frequently? Sometimes looking at impure images is a means to an end, that end being my satisf satisf satisfaction. While what I know, what I want deep down, is a pure and consummated marriage to satisfy those desires. I understand that it's impossible to have, to not have temptation, but I worry sometimes it'll still be tempted. Ah, as frequently and as strongly as when I was when I'm married. Thanks for sharing your thoughts on this. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Michael Knowles just said, oh man, where can I get a box of these pints with the Aquinas cigars? I will send them to him and he will do me the favor of reviewing them on the Michael Knowles show. Uh, he doesn't know that yet, but that will be happening. Please, Michael. Um, all right. So this is a very good question. It's a very humble question. It's an honest question. And so I'm, I'm grateful. I think there's nothing more beautiful than when humans are vulnerable. And, and this is a vulnerable question. And I would say me personally, 
No, I mean, I, I started looking at porn when I was eight years old, unfortunately. And uh, when I was about 12 or 13, I had my one of my best friends, mothers, buy us pornography. And so I had a steady diet of pornography until about the age of 17 or 16 when the internet came in. And then it was very, very difficult. That's about the time I became a Christian. And so I would say that that certainly impacted me like it's impacted many of us. But I like to think of it as the, the means by which we can find, uh, we, we can work out our salvation. You know, like for some of us who struggle with pride, for str some of us it's envy or it's gossip or, you know, and, and, and we want to eradicate these things with prayer and with the sacraments. But I think all of us would admit that in those times where we find ourselves feeling anxious or frustrated, these old demons, so to speak, raise their head. And we have to decide in those moments, what kind of man do I want to be? You know, do I want to be the kind of person who lords it over others, who believes my opinion is always correct, uh, who refuses to say he's sorry? Maybe you're a violent man. Maybe you're a violent woman. And um, I like to think of this as the context through which, through which our good Jesus is going to make me a saint. And I don't say that with any pride, because like Therese said of herself, and I can say it all the more, I have no virtues on my own. So when I say I have confidence that God is going to make Matt Frad a saint, that's what I mean. I don't mean that God's that Matt Frad's going to make Matt Frad a saint. No, Matt Frad does not have that kind of power, but God will, and I, I have confidence that He will, and I trust in Him, and that He's going to make me a saint amidst these temptations. So to get to your specific question, no, I, I would say it doesn't. I, I don't think that marriage is a cure for lust at all. In fact, I've had some people say to me that engaging the sexual faculty correctly is in some ways a more difficult thing than not engaging it at all, if you know what I mean. Uh, I want to point you to a course that I've created, which is free. I'm not trying to sell you something here, it, but it's it's quite good. It's called strive21.com. It's a 20... Slash Matt. Thank you, Thursday. Strive21.com slash Matt. If you go to strive21.com slash Matt... It's a 21-day detox from porn course I created just for fellas. There's other beautiful things out there for women like Magdala Ministries if you're a woman who's struggling with pornography. This one's just for fellas. We've had about 40,000 men go through this course. And so you can go there today, strive21.com slash Matt, sign up. And then every day for 21 days, you'll get a little video from me, a challenge for that day. And you'll be interacting with a worldwide community of men who want to live pure lives. So uh, you might find that helpful. Um, but I will say this, you know, I, I, at the risk of maybe sharing too much. I was quite afraid that when my darling wife and I came together for the first time after we were married, it was our wedding night. I was really afraid because people had told me that all of the images and all of the things they'd seen would rear back up in that moment. And I want to say, you know, maybe it was just a beautiful grace of God, but it was nothing like that. It, it it really feels, as honest as I can say it, and as honest as I can be a judge about these things, it was just a pure gift. It was just a delight and a beautiful thing where I wanted to, I wanted to give my strength to her. I wanted her to receive that strength. So sex is a lovely, beautiful thing. You know, the, the most beautiful things can be made the most ugly. That's why sex can be made ugly, you know. Uh, this is why ain't like this is why Lucifer, for example, that can become so ugly. Like you can't make a cow bad, but you can make an archangel bad. Um, so I'd say just be of good cheer. Re recognize that freedom from this stuff is a daily choice that we make by our actions, um, and just not to be afraid. You know, uh, you're going to fail, and so is your wife in her own ways, and you'll you'll grow together. So I hope that's a help. Mm. Carly Blue says, do you like Vegemite? I tried it once. Gah. Perhaps I didn't fix it correctly. All right, listen to me now. Look at me in the eyes. Look at me. Listen to me. If you want to enjoy Vegemite, you've you got to go about it the right way. Now, Vegemite, I got it up here on my, on my shelf here. It's basically yeast extract. It, honestly, it tastes like thick soy sauce, if I'm to be honest. And you might say, that's bloody disgusting. Right, but you like soy sauce, perhaps, but 
in certain instances, like with sushi, for example. So I think what happens is a lot of Americans take Vegemite and they spread it on toast like it's strawberry jam or peanut butter. And that's why they hate it. Now, here's how my wife came to love Vegemite. And you can buy a Vegemite on Amazon, by the way. So shout out to Vegemite. Here's what you want to do. Get a beautiful piece of maybe sourdough bread. Toast it. Thick layer of butter. Thin smear. Just go easy. It's your first time. Thin smear of Vegemite. And then put a, you know just a, a lightly boiled egg or an over easy egg on top of it and eat it like that. My wife was a believer after I taught her to do it that way. That will be your introduction to Vegemite, I think. Katie did it. Says. Mm. She says, I have four children as well, three boys and a girl. I wanted more, as I'm sure you and Cameron would have liked to have more, but hard things happen. My question for you is, is there a name you would have loved to have named one of your children and why? So my wife, unfortunately, it was really quite tragic. She um, had to have a hysterectomy. She's shared that publicly, which is why I am okay saying it publicly too. And it was, it was, a, it was a real poverty. It was a sadness, but it was something that had to happen. Um, we would like more children, and if the good Lord wants it uh, and, and sees to it, we will adopt more children, but we'll see. Now, but if I could have a, another, I would name my, if I had a daughter, I would name her Margaret, because I think Margaret is one of the most beautiful names ever. It was also the name of my grandma, my maternal grandma. If I was to have a, a boy, I think I'd name him John. I also like Benedict a great deal. See, I was coming, when we had children, we were on the cusp of like the slightly weird, but at least kind of Catholic names. Now, I don't mean to make anyone feel bad, but it seems like there has been a swing towards traditional names. And I'm so glad to see that. I remember I was at a park once in San Diego and the Sheila's calling her children and their names were Fall and Winter. Fall and Winter. I presume if she had more, Summer and Spring would have uh, made their appearance. But, you know, people were naming their children things like John Paul, which is beautiful, beautiful name. Colby, another beautiful Catholic name, but still not super traditional, right? So um, I named one of my daughters, she's one of the coolest girls you'll ever hope to meet, Avila. I love that name, and I'm glad we named her Avila. And then we also have a Kiara. Now, what's interesting about Kiara is I wanted to name her Mary. And at the time, my wife said, well, if she gave birth to a grandma, we could call her Mary. She didn't like that name at the time. I think she's since repented in sackcloth and ashes, so you can go easy on her in the comments. But Mary's a gorgeous name, of course, and naming your child Mary I think is a beautiful thing. But I remember I was sitting at work one day at Catholic Answers, and Carl Keating, the founder and at the time the president of Catholic Answers, came by and he knocked on the door and we had a bit of a conversation. And he said, what, what are you thinking about naming your daughter? Because she was about to be born. And I said, well, I'm thinking at the time we were thinking of Fiona or maybe Kiara. He said, Kiara, I like Kiara. I went, done. You give me a raise, I'll name her Kiara. I didn't say that, but we went with Kiara. Okay, Matt asks, what books are you reading now? Uh, I'm always in the middle of several books. I'm reading The Brothers Karamazov again. Although I have to say, even though I love The Brothers Karamazov, this is like the third or fourth time. No, the, this is probably the third time that I've read it. I'd, I'd say as much as I love it, I'm going to have to have a bit of a break after this slog. But I'm reading that right now, almost done, about 200 pages left. <clears throat> I also just picked up today and began reading Chesterton's book on... St. Francis of Assisi. Um, oh, we have a comment section here. Okay, this is from Gustavo. Those cigars are pure poison. Yes, porn needs to be banned, but so does tobacco. It's an unpopular view. I, I, Gustavo, I would just like to invite you not to be racist because tobacco was given to us by the Native Americans. It just seems to me that for you to be so ungrateful can really only stem from a place of white privilege and deep-seated racism. Uh, so I'm not going to put it down for my own safety, and I'm going to continue to enjoy it. But thanks for being here. 
Um, what else am I reading? I'm reading an excellent book by Jacques Philippe called Searching For and Maintaining Peace. This is a book that I always uh, am reading and would highly recommend to you, especially if you're someone who struggles with anxiety, perhaps, or, um, you know, wants to grow in the spiritual life. I think it's a fantastic book. This is for you, Gustavo. Uh So those are some books that I'm reading. Okay, a different Matt here asks me how it is I ended up living in Ireland. So I got married in 2006, and by the end of 2006, my wife and I had moved to Donegal in Ireland, where we lived for three years. I'm not sure if I've shared this story before, but here you go. I was uh, fired from my job on my birthday, it gets worse, one month before my wedding. I was a youth minister at a particular church in Texas. No need to no, no need to say which one. And it was on my birthday. I got called in and fired. And um, I don't think for good reasons, but I'm sure other people have different opinions. And yeah, so that was weird, man. A month before my wedding and I'm now unemployed, but worse, I'm now illegal because my visa was on the condition of that particular job. Can you imagine what it's like to call your future father-in-law and say, hey, just want you to know I'm unemployed and illegal and super pumped to marry your daughter next month. What's crazy is we had a place, I don't know, was it in Nicaragua or somewhere? We had this gorgeous honeymoon destination planned out. This just goes to show what a good woman my wife is. It also just goes to show why it's very important to save the gift of sex till marriage. Because I think if you don't... Um, then you've got the honeymoon to look forward to. Whereas if you do, you've got each other to look forward to. Well, we ended up renting a place on a, on a river in Texas. It was a friend's river house. And we had an absolutely lovely time. And that's that. Well, anyway, we were just doing ministry work in Ireland together a couple of years prior. And so we had some contacts there. And there was a priest up in Donegal who invited my wife and I to come and help, help to work with the youth. So that's how we ended up in Donegal. And it was a, a beautiful time. Donegal is an absolutely gorgeous part of the world. Um, we were up the road from Enya's dad's pub. Enya's father would go to our parish every day for Holy Mass. And yeah, it was just a, it was a lovely time in, in some respects. It was very difficult in other respects, but that's how I ended up there. Selrak says, will you be visiting other cities in Europe? While you're on sabbatical there, would you be open to meeting in Paris? I have no idea who else in the community lives there, but I do. Right, so I'll, as I said earlier, be in Austria in January for about five months, and certainly we plan on taking trips to different countries. And so maybe what I'll do is make an announcement when I'm going to Germany or Italy or France or uh, where have you, and, um, and maybe we can meet up. I'd really like that. Uh, let's see. This person says, it seems that you are fond of your son, Peter. Yes, I am. Could you talk about your affection for each of your other children as well? So I think one of the reasons I give emphasis to Peter on the show is because he's quite young. I think the reason I might not emphasize the other children isn't because I don't delight in them, but because they're older. You know, watch my son like watches some of these shows, my older son, and I don't want to kind of call them out by name. I don't think that's fair. In fact, maybe I should maybe stop mentioning Peter specifically too. Um, but all of my kids are really beautiful kids. I have two boys and two girls, and they are terrific in spite of the wounds I have tried to inflict upon them by being an immature father. That's not true. I haven't tried to inflict any wounds, but I would say they're very good. So I won't say their names, but I'm going to go through the list and I'll say something about each of my children. Uh, one of my children, let's say that, is a very strong, entrepreneurial, good-looking young man. And uh, finds himself disgusted by the woke propaganda being pushed on him and the LBGQ stuff being pushed on him and his friends. I never had to tell him to be disgusted at that. He just found it disgusting. And him and his friends revolt over that. <clears throat> I think that's kind of cool. He also is somebody who goes to Adoration Weekly with some friends. Uh, you know, he's, he's a knucklehead teenager like all teenagers and like me, but he's a very good boy. Uh, my daughter, one of my daughters, is fantastic. Um, 
I just got word that they want me to stop popping my lips when I puff. Well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna, no. This is ASMR, baby. You're welcome. Some of you are here for it. Most of you aren't. All right, I'll stop. Um, yeah, I got a daughter and her sense of humor is remarkable. She's one of the funniest people I've ever met, even though she's a woman. Um, no, that's not true. I never, I never said women aren't funny. Just stand up women. Um, she's delightful. She's, she's clever. I don't know where she comes up with these things. I could say the same thing about my other daughter, but one thing I say about the other daughter is she's feisty. She's a lion. Like my wife is a beautiful woman and she's, she'll defend people she sees at a disadvantage. And my, one of my daughters is like her. We call her Cameron 2.0. She's just delightful. Well, friends, a couple of things to remind you about. Number one, we're doing a watch party on Amazon tonight. We're going to be watching A Man for All Seasons. If you want to watch that with us, we're going to watch it exactly the same time. If you don't know how watch parties work, that's how it works. I click play. We get to watch it at the same time and comment as we're watching it. Uh, and that's only available to people who are, are, are our local supporters. And a massive thanks to those of you who are local supporters because we're not sure when big tech's going to come after us. It's sort of unpredictable. Like I would have thought that having an ex-abortionist on my show talking about the revolting procedures of abortions would have done it it didn't but it will soon and so having your support on locals helps us a great deal so mattfrad.locals.com also one thing you get when you support us is we have a newspaper that goes out four times a year it's called the jill people are really enjoying it and it's a way for you to just detach from your phone sit out on the back have a cigar or a whiskey or something like that or a glass of water if you want and just to have a nice time. So mattfrad.locals.com, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. As a community, we're going to be watching A Man for All Seasons. We'll wrap it up there, except if you are a supporter and have issues in any respect, maybe it's the Jill link, which you can't find. Uh, maybe it's tonight's thing. Go to pintswithaquinas.com slash feedback, pintswithaquinas.com slash feedback. Also, when you sign up today, we just interviewed Dale Olquist. We spoke about G.K. Chesterton for a couple of hours, and you'll absolutely love that. I do pre-releases here as well, which eventually go to YouTube, so you can watch that there as well. God bless you, and glory to Jesus Christ. Thanks.